So, good morning, everyone. So, it is like a dreary, ugly morning. We decided to get together. We both got to watch Mandalorian because the streaming service, it, what it launched yesterday, midnight. Or, That's right. It learned this morning at midnight, the Disney streaming service was launched, and we were fortunate enough to be able to watch The Mandalorian and uh, decided to do a reaction video to it. Yeah. Well, it's fresh in our brains, right? Because very fresh. We only have so many long uh, hours before <laughs> our thoughts will be lost. Yeah. To the nothingness of time. That's absolutely right. I would have had to watch it watch it again if we did. This I need morning. to watch it again too because I didn't digest it. I was worried about posting on Instagram as I was watching it, and yeah, what I was going to talk to you about and. The dogs, like I need to watch it again and like really focus in on the smaller things. But yeah, so you can't for my you. first watch through, I was able to really enjoy what they're trying to accomplish with this first attempt at a live action TV series, and I couldn't be more excited. The end product is is something that is so good, and it feels uh, straight out of the uh, the theater, kind of like you feel like you're watching. Something said in the original trilogy, like George Lucas himself was behind a directing chair. Like yeah, this is the one of his projects. Right. Yeah, it, it blew me away, man. Just going down to like before the acting, before the characters and everything, just like the the cinematic shots of it. Mm -hmm. I mean the quality. This is mm -hmm. just a TV series, man. This could have for me, this could have been a movie. I thought it, they did so well with the CG effects. I mean yeah. everything the budget is uh uh, Farver, the director, aka Happy from the MCU. Happy Hogan. Yeah, he he exceeded budgets every episode. I'm sure. And he got to a point. At one point, we haven't seen that episode yet, obviously, because yeah. we only have chapter one right now. I think it's a smart move to do the chapters individual releases rather than give it all to us like people would have already binged everything by now. yeah exactly and every, the whole thing would be ruined on the internet this is i think it's smart and the time release episodes make sense to me yeah from a marketing standpoint absolutely they bring you with them but at one point farverol was in such financial dismay with disney over the filming this that he had to call the 501st Legion Bible to be extras in the episode for free just because he knew they would do it because they're that crazy Star Wars fan. Right. That but he that would, would give them the filming fun. location. He needed stormtroopers and he didn't have any more budget. Yeah. He really yeah. wanted this scene to have physical. He could have done CGI troopers. Yeah. But, but he said, I want this to be real and tangible and gritty. I'm going to call the 501st Legion. And they responded by saying, where do you need us and when? And how many of us can come? Because you, when we yeah, put this out there, it's an honor, people right? will literally take vacation time, yeah. buy airfare to wherever they have to be to be part of this project. And they came and exceeded what he needed. So Yeah, man. It blew and, me away. You know, they're in the credits. Every member that I helped him. That's awesome. If you watch the credits on Disney Plus, you can actually go to the little. They, it it automatically makes the credit screen tiny. You can choose to enlarge it. There's a page at the end where the Five Hundred First Legion is mentioned, and every it's member awesome. that, even though that episode hasn't aired, so they're in a permanent <laughs> uh, recognition page on the credits. And that was the the beginning. The the ran down, beat up crew. That we see towards the beginning i mean or not in the beginning but oh when, uh when like when he goes no those people. were actual actors those were yeah. real extras on the show that were just in that uh, office where he took the job right those that's not we haven't seen the episode oh, where he no. needed the legion yet but we will it's one of the future chapters i have the layout here the schedule release and it's so authentic because this uh, takes place five years after the the Return of the Jedi, right? It takes at when that's the, what they say, know, yeah. Five years when, it, when the Empire falls, you know, Vader's gone, and they say this is the furthest reach of whatever the Empire still might be left. 
And I think it just uh, it's the there's the just quality, remnants of it. Yeah, the outfits they just do so well with it. You know, it it feels like the Wild West space western. You know, it just well, this amazing. is supposed to be set in what was always referred to in the original trilogy as the Outer Rim. Yeah. And the outer rim worlds were always notorious for being like no man's lands, anything goes kind of rules, kind of like the Wild West here in the United States. Yeah. I know we have viewers all over. So the way it was so lawless in those years, that's how the outer rim worlds operate. It's like, I'll just kill you to take your ship because I want it, and no one's here going to police that. So yeah. it's that kind of like you really need to handle yourself in those locations. And, yeah, you have to be like, someone who can uh, handle himself. And, and as you see in the opening scene, he's a total badass in a, being outnumbered. Like, right. Wasn't a problem. Yeah. that He was able to handle business, the intelligence. and But they, they uh, what are they, like the Mandalorians is a certain tribe? It looks like they're going that way. I didn't expect that. That was a shock for me. But their um, skill when he does ridiculous. Like they are known, they're put up, like when he talks to that, uh, the, that little character that was going to give him help him pass through. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's that like, was I'm Nick gonna... Nolte, was the voice of that guy. Yeah. I have spoken. Yeah. I have spoken. But, I mean, when he's like, talks about him, he's like, I've never, I've helped you because you're a Mandalorian. I've never, I've met never him before, seen a Mandalorian. I've only read the, the legend. It's a uh, vibe of like, you know, there's, it's like a legend to them. Yeah. That's like, really cool people. to see in <clears throat> this telling of this story. Because up until, like in the uh, the novels and stuff, and I know you've read things in the extended universe in the past, yeah. prior to the Disney acquisition. I know that changed a lot of things. But Mandalorians were a, they kind of stuck to their own kind of thing. They did live in tribes during their prime. <clears throat> and um, is if you go by the movies, all we have is Django and Boba. Right, that's all we know. And like uh, very little they were it was a lot of secrecy beside how they, they were solo on their own they don't show like a tribe kind of life no they were definitely um i guess Django raised boba to be the same way he was to be right. a loner whereas this guy is actually working for the goal of benefiting his tribe that he's reporting to yeah so that was really cool i almost thought he was going to be like the loner kind of thing too but it was pleasantly surprised to see that he's he's working towards, to yeah, furthering his tribe. That's kind of unexpected for me. And they give us these little pieces, like they tell him uh, here that you never take off your helmet. And I need to watch it again, but correct me if I'm wrong. When he goes into that kind of like uh, cave, like whatever they live, there was they're like little, kids yeah. running through kids with helmets. Yeah, like, they had little they helmets. Playing them. without them in their own homes. Little bitty <laughs> uh, Mandalorian kiddos. Yeah. In training, but they had the helmets on, like they're just running around. Like, and they had like one standing guard there, like watching who was yeah. coming in their area. And <clears throat> whoever the lady was, I don't know if she was some type of like a uh, elder. She obviously has some kind of rank above him. Right. She was definitely a blacksmith. I mean, she was, but I mean, her helmet, like her outfit, was amazing. Like, yeah, when I saw her. She just looked like a badass. Yeah, he he obviously was trying, wanting like he was wanting her favor, obviously. Absolutely. There was somebody yeah. you wanted to uh, impress, and he was happy to uh, to contribute what he was contributing. And you know, he he wasn't looking for uh, recognition or anything like that. He was just doing what was good for their their tribe, right. which is cool. Very selfless. Yeah, he gave everything. Here it is. He just turns all everything in he got. You know, that shows you he's not just for him for his own money. Like it's pretty amazing, but uh. Man, I would like to see her in action figure form. I thought she was incredible. She added that King Leonidas Roman-esque mm. build to her helmet. It was amazing. It was way different than the Mandalorian stuff we've seen ever. <clears throat> I was impressed with it. And, uh, the the uh, piece he earned on his shoulder that yeah, she melted down for him. What'd you think of that? I thought that was a really cool, like, it makes you think, is, do these people, like, is that a big sign, like, you know, a part of what they thrive for because it shows their status amongst mm -hmm. their own people. Because I would not have thought anything of that, but now I want to go look look back at all my toys and mm -hmm. all my action figures. And 
you know, does that mean something? Is that like the rank showing that you've done this for your people or it was yeah, pretty interesting. It sound like it was something missing from the templates that she already had and he brought it to her. Yeah. And, um, Carl Weathers character, the guy that was paying him yeah. for the bounties yep. he brought is the one that provided him with that one that provided him with that. Yeah. He like he, he wanted to take everything, all the all the work that he had. He goes, Hey, I have to spread this out amongst everybody. But, you know, I guess that he pretty much it's like an unknown thing or it's something they don't speak of. He is like the best of their because that's what that guy was told that had the job for him. You're the best of you know of the Mandalorians right now. So I'm I'm taking it he is, you know, they they save him for the the toughest stuff. I loved uh was it IG eleven? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that i think man the way they they brought in the comedy to this was yeah great it was subtle show. comedy which is good yeah it was a serious 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 show it wasn't it was like solo going off the deep end <clears throat> super comedic right it's just the right That's amount about it you just got a touch of it right it was excellently done like that yeah it was measured correctly you know all we've ever seen of that character is he's sitting around in the background you know he's a He's a bounty hunter, but we don't know much more of him in the past. And just to no, see this, him this unit is IG-11. Mm -hmm. IG-88 is from Empire Strikes Back. 88, yeah. we don't know what his fate is, but I know in the extended universe, there was very there were several encounters with Han Solo and Chewbacca in 88, him being hired by Jabba, him being hired by the Empire to hunt down anyone who was a rebel. So... Right. Um, this unit is based on that style droid. Yeah. Um, but I do know IG-88 was not a communicator. He did not speak. Uh, At all. Only in droid beeps. Yeah. So that's what makes him different from this unit, which was communicating with the Mandalorian and accepting that they were both in the Bounty Hunter Guild and that yeah. they could uh, spell it the brownie and work together as, as one. Uh, he it was a fun scene for sure. The shootout yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah. The action part of that was amazing. Like if you're an action junkie, like what they yeah. did, and I love the end part of that scene. Like, <laughs> you know, at the end part with the uh, the Mandalorian having to get his business done no matter what. Nice. He, he's not the type. He doesn't want to. That's the one thing is you know he's probably killed a ton of people, or he's had to. But this guy does not want to do that. He just if it's necessary. Because mm. he even told the first guy he caught in the beginning, you know, warm or cold. Yeah, I can bring you in. Him. That was really cool. Yeah, but he didn't beat him up. The other guys were just slapping him around. Is that like bring you in warm or can bring yeah. you in cold? <laughs> he kind of had a certain respect to him. He didn't. He didn't. As long as that guy was cool, he wasn't gonna go beating him up. Yeah, but he started yapping his jaw too much, and yeah, it was <laughs> carbonite for you, buddy. <laughs> what do you think of uh, this guy's shit? I like the ship. He said it was the, again that that uh the guy that he caught was mentioning that it was an old classic ship. Also, it's nothing new. It's mm. an old junker, I guess. What I was uh what I noticed like with uh, when Han Solo was frozen in carbonite, that was a huge system in a room. This is just a ship. It's a smaller setup to mm -hmm. do that process. Yeah, he's so, got a streamlined version of the carbonite process, right? And built this, into this his years forward. So maybe the technology got better. I don't. Because it seemed like it took the whole room to do that for Jabba. Yeah, because if you consider that Empire Strikes Back was a year before the events of Return of the Jedi, so that's only right. six Here's years difference. Years. This guy has a portable version of what <clears throat> took what yeah. Cloud City was doing with all of that, that entire room. Yeah, was necessary to do that process. Right, he did it just in the little. Hanger uh, there to ship. That's a lot of advancement. I'm sure uh Boba would have been jealous to have that ability to do it yeah. on board a slave one. We were, we were discussing that here too. Is like the ship is cool. It's uh the slave we just the slave one is just something that old school slave one is just a legendary fans. ship, yeah, right? Just, just like the Falcon. Iconic. It's iconic, it. exactly. Yeah. You you can see like you could pick cool, but... if you looked at every spaceship that's been on TV. Ships like the Falcon and Slave One just stand out. Yeah. They are that you know they're so iconic. You see them and you know what they are. You know, if there's no 
guessing like what science fiction is this from you know that star Wars. yeah maybe you know, this guy ship will get to that point by the it end could, of all yeah this. it's not as i don't know the the slave had one has like a certain shape to it it's yeah it looks, i mean it looked like nothing else we had seen yeah. he landed it one way and it flew you know in the vertical position yeah versus and how it after, looked like when it was landed you know it was it was crazy looking and after what a fun first, toy slave one was right as a kid i loved it i'm yeah, willing the to get it as a three and three quarter scale and have it with my six inch just to have it in the background that's how amazing yeah it was. yeah it's there it's a it's a fun shit yeah and i love the fact that well like we saw in the the prequel trilogy you know this is passed on Django had it and i'm assuming you know that boba he handed it off to boba or boba well Chibaba. i mean when he, he was kind of inherited when mace made him <laughs> like, <laughs> an <right>. orphan <laughs> yeah <clears throat> so but he kept it running like but it's cool to see it they basically it looks like they just get what they, they get to do their job these uh mandalorians whatever they can get to do yeah job they because, um procure what they need on site yeah and they yeah. integrate it into their repertoire and um he's not a uh he hasn't earned maybe that's something this will build up to uh by the time we get to the uh you know this is just the first um season of what could be several you know um but maybe it'll, it'll lead up to him earning his jetpack because we all know Django and Boba were jetpack wielding right. Mandalorian. We discussed that too here. Like this guy yeah. doesn't have a jetpack. Yeah, he's not earned that. But maybe that's something they want to build up to in the story. Yeah. Him getting that, you know. Yeah. And the, uh, also going back to uh, Lando, was odd. He he went from being like this president of Cloud City, like he was, you know, this high ranking kind of official guy. And now he's kind of after the fall of everything, he's pretty much just working underground, doing that underground stuff, you know, handing out these. Uh, no, that's these not Lando, change. though. Carl uh, Weathers is not Lando. He's not playing Lando? No, no, it's a, a new character in this series. Uh, yeah, gotcha. so uh, Billy, Billy D. I, Williams is still Lando, and reprise. he will reprise the role in oh, gotcha. Rise of Skywalker. So this guy, this is just what he does. This guy is just someone Mandalorian's been using for money to do right. job. He's yeah. his handler right now, but yeah. he is not. He's so not he, Lando. He's the middleman getting there, getting work for all of them. But right, he's trying and to he didn't want to take. You see, when he offered him the Imperial credits, and he's like, yeah. "Hell no." Yeah, he goes. It still spins. Yeah, but it seems like it's that's still what spins. It's called, but yeah. <laughs> Obviously, uh, things out there in the outer rim are not doing that great since the fall of the empire. Yeah. Because he was complaining about like he can, what he was offering for the gigs wouldn't even yeah. cost his cover his fuel expense. Didn't even cover the fuel. Yeah. So it's making it not worth it almost. <laughs> he That's wanted true. worthwhile gigs that are gonna give more to his tribe, and you get that vibe from him. In yeah. the one scene where he has the interaction with the blacksmith, uh, Mandalorian. Yeah, and she even says, "Just the leftovers is going to be able to, to sponsor all these families for a while." After yeah, and he's like awesome. Field. He's like great. Yeah, yeah. I think he's. I think. I think the show is uh, is phenomenal. I mean, we're so lucky to be alive during this. I mean, I know a lot of people criticize Disney since their ownership, right? But I think if honestly. True Star Wars fans have nothing but stuff to revel about since this, you know, all the money they're pouring into the franchise and the law. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, George Lucas, if he had kept the license, none of yeah. these projects would be unless he wanted to make more and he just didn't have that fire anymore. Yeah. I kind of feel like, uh, Maybe you know they weren't the great. These recent trilogies got so much crap from people because that, that's how diehards are. They don't like anything changed at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I want you know R two D two, and I want this, and I want everything to stay the same forever. Like these people aren't going to age and die, you know, and we have to move on. But you can tell, like, because as soon as they start doing these spinoffs, everybody loves that so much more because it's different and it's not messing with the original stuff. So I, I kind of feel like 
if they were to give it a better chance, I bet after people watch those movies a few more times, they'll kind of it'll grow on them. I didn't have a problem with the movies, to be honest with you, but I did enjoy myself solo Rogue One and now this better, to, you know, for some reason because it's fresh, it's new. We're filling in gaps in our timeline that we've needed for, you know, that we have to go to the cartoons and stuff to try to piece together. There's so much potential for storytelling in those gaps. Yeah, and as they fill in the characters, even like we're getting the little uh, Palpatine, uh, little uh, Easter eggs or you know little teases. It's exciting to see what's how that's going to work out. Being well, hit. um, as far as that goes, we got to look back to the conversation between Palpatine and Anakin during the space opera scene in Revenge of the Sith, where he tells Anakin he could even keep himself from dying. Meaning right. we really shouldn't be that confused why he's still alive. Because, right, because he told how he pretty much him. told Anakin, I have earned I I learned the ability to, to keep to stay alive. You know what that's so true. even though Vader threw him down and even though the, the Death Star was destroyed, in some kind of way he was able to transfer himself to a new body yeah. through the force. Like that's true. His consciousness or it could be they could do it anyway but you're right since you said that i guess because of my memory i for, completely forgot about maybe that. yoda luke and vader as ghosts gotta go whoop palpatine's ghost yeah force gang fight yeah yeah and then you have maul there <laughs> <clears throat> now that that's true that was a good scene for he was just so desperate to get uh get her back that he's like don't worry you know i knew a guy that had this ability i've acquired that ability myself i could teach you What's your overall um, thoughts on oh. Disney Plus so far? The presentation of how the app works, I love the, the layout. Movie. Is it easy to search for you? Do you like the uh, format they're going with? I like the format. I like the interface they're using. It doesn't have a whole lot. I think that's one reason for the price point. I mean, you go in through the se selections, and it's like a lot of the same movies because there's not a whole lot to it. But mm -hmm. I like the fact that it's cut off Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, like, you can go in the section. The way they divided the various yeah, it's categories. Yeah, divided out, and you can see it in sections or, you know, mixed together. I think it's good. I like it. And I know it's going to be tweaked over a lot. This is the beginning. It's a very small price point because you're getting very little. And then mm -hmm. if you look at um, my buddy looked up, and he has the true list of all the, the release date, the actual release dates for everything we're waiting on, like all the Marvel and all that. I mean, we still got like a year or two before we really start getting all these originals coming out. I think the the Scarlet Witch series with Vision that will be the first yeah. Marvel series that will be ready sometime early next year. WandaVision. WandaVision. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Be interesting. I look forward to the Cassian and uh, K two S O. They're gonna have a yeah. show. That is on par with the Mandalorian, the budget. Yeah. And uh, it'll be set leading up to the events, starting with Cassian in that alleyway, getting the information about the pilot. Well, that'll be cool. So you get to see how Cassian climbed the ranks in the rebellion as a spy. Is that live action or? Yeah, mm -hmm. with the same actors. In the same Diego voice. Luna and the dude who is the voice of K2SO. That'd so it will follow Diego's character as Cassian, how he climbed the ranks as a rebel spy during that very, very turmoil period of um, them getting ready to break away from the Republic and, yeah. and, and be separate from the Empire. And like this whole, the rebellion was still underground at that point. Right. And he, they looked up to Cassian, right? He was like one of their top guys, you could tell. Yeah, Cassian had a lot of missions Fine. under his belt that he was notorious for getting the job done. And yeah, that's why uh, people rid him off as, uh, you know, like uh, Jen tried to make him feel bad because she was he was going to kill her dad. But like, he was trying that. to explain from his point of view, in his line of work, you have to, people are counting on results. And yeah. When they called in that strike on the planet where her dad was and they hit the landing bay and stuff, like uh, he regretted calling it in, but the, he had never had that problem before in the past because he didn't have any attention. 
he was so into his job. So I look That's forward really to seeing that badass Cassian who's right. not who's unhinged and him and K2 just going from various job to job. What they gotta do. It's gonna be an amazing show, I'm sure. I'm a big yeah. fan of Diego Luna. I think he's a hell of an actor. Who do you know do we know who's gonna be in the pilot seat directing this and all? No, no idea. Yeah. But I hope Disney picks the right person. I don't know right. if they'll have as much passion as Farver. Yeah. Because that dude this guy, it feels movie esque uh, to me. Oh, I know, right? The, the presentation is twice. And it's like it could be a oh, God. movie already. The creatures, the creatures that he had to learn to ride, like how it doesn't it get more Star Wars Hope. than that. It's better than New Hope's technology. <laughs> what they yeah. had, you know? It looked good. Yeah, it's amazing, man. It, it was it was well done. Like I was in love with it right away. And I got to see it twice, you know. So Well, uh chapter two will be ready this Friday. This Friday. And they'll so we there. already have a new app. They're not even going to make us wait a whole week. This we Friday, a new chapter will be ready on the 15th, the next one. Yeah. So, And I want to start watching uh, the whole Disney Plus. It's going to be a cool thing because, uh, like, the, the movies, the Pixar and all that, my family's all into that. Oh, so yeah. To have the whole I mean, um, the Tim Burton Dumbo is on there. Sam and I have been wanting to watch that. Uh -huh. and, uh, and they'll be getting all the new stuff that you have to like still buy, you know. Like, uh -huh. I'm sure we'll get it. Like the Melissafent one uh -huh. is already going to be put on there, and yeah. I'm sure two will follow eventually. There's a lot of one on there that will tell you it's not ready to play yet, but it'll give you the date when it will be coming. No, yeah. right. So they have to add it. Like I said, the 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 catalog of stuff is not a whole lot to me, but it will get there. And it had like some of Fox's stuff. Like I saw the Simpsons was. Yeah. You have you should have all thirty some seasons of Simpsons. <clears throat> yeah, I guess they have some type of partnership with Fox or. Well, they own the Simpsons when they bought Fox. Okay. And they own Alien versus Predator too. <laughs> you know that Disney owns Alien and Predator. Nice. Maybe yeah, it's crazy, that. right? I think they said they were gonna vault Alien. For now. And work with Predator. And they're going to try to revive Predator. Yeah, they, they probably could. And if that's a success, then they will look at bringing the Xenomorphs back in some kind of way. That would be cool. That's just early talks, just discussions. There's nothing. The sky's the limit. It's whatever they want to do. They're the billionaires. They have the properties. They have the yeah. billions. <laughs> they can do what they want, or like you said, they can park it, and that'll be it. I like so it. we're going on 30 minutes. You want to call this episode? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. You know, overall, like, I've really enjoyed the show, man. Like, it, yeah, man, it, it revives my bright. Star Wars vibe. You know, I just want to get into Star Wars again because of it. It's like, pretty darn epic. I mean, it's a great time to be a fan, to be big time. someone who loves Star Wars. It's a great time. We see those Outer World Jawas, like, make a little cameo in it. Like, there's a lot going on. So I enjoyed it. Thanks for uh, being up yeah, so early. To, to no do doubt. This. Hopefully, uh, we can get Dave on the next one. We do chapter two. Yeah, I'd like to continue to do these for each chapter. He he watched it late last night. I saw him post on yeah, his, him uh, and I watched his it Facebook a, channel. Blue Curse yesterday at work, I could I was one track mine all day. Like when will I get home so I can watch the Mandalorian? Yeah. Like he's constantly. I haven't felt that way about a TV show in a very long time, man. <laughs> You know how I watched it, right? And uh, we're driving down a rainy road on the highway, and it's like two, three in the morning. And my partner put it on his phone for me and set it on the. I dash, put it on this. Uh... And, it, <laughs> and it's a newer iPhone, so the, the 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 volume's good and all that, you know. So I'm sitting back and I watched it like that, and I was like, "Whoa!" And still, you enjoy <laughs> the experience, even on that. Oh, and you get the the vibe. This guy has like I don't want to say races, but he hates droids. Like it's gonna be something with him, I think, as they go forward. Remember that us uh, that brand yeah. Lance Beater shows up with a droid. He's like, uh, uh. He would rather have that crappy broken no droids with a living. Yeah, yeah, that was funny. Droid. So something goes on in his life where he don't trust them. They haven't shown it yet because we did get flashes of him, him as a kid, all that he's been through. Yeah, and I feel like a droid thing is gonna come up eventually. Maybe he had an encounter with the actual yeah. IG88. Yeah. 
that backfired on him. This one was more like he would he talked that like you said the eighty eight that he dealt with was rational. He's yeah, like, eleven. Acceptable. This it's eleven, like, uh, he he was able to. Uh, it was funny him talking out of not self destructing so many times. That was the funny part. He had that uh, thermal detonator ready to go. It's like do not self destruct. Do it. We can get out of this. <laughs> <laughs> all right sir well it was fun yeah definitely we'll, we'll keep this up, up with the next like uh, the video comment below do you love mandalorian let us know if you're on the fence like, about yeah, it about we it. highly suggest it six dollars <throat> well worth the price of admission it's uh, a good thing we didn't spoiler the the last part you want to leave that for like star wars time. fans who have no interest in anything else at the very least, should get Disney Plus just for Mandalorian. If I mean, oh yeah, it's a no-brainer. Disney knows this; they're going to get that money. They're going to get it. They're smart, and they made it for us to start with such a low price point. Anybody can. Yeah, afford it. I mean, it's. I spend that at a burger place to get a burger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, that doesn't even barely pay for a burger anymore. I mean. Yeah, but again, we left. We're not spoiling the last, the ending part that kind of blew everybody away. At the yeah, last we can point. talk more about him. Uh, Later. chapter two yeah. yeah that'll be good definitely wasn't expecting that for sure when that thing opened definitely. up that one was inside that was pretty wild because whatever happened i thought was the end of all that you know so it was good great great show check out the mandalorian thank you guys for watching we are two-thirds of the savage podcast i'm going to do our very best to deliver episode 11 sometime this upcoming weekend uh prov providing it uh schedule works out Catch y'all later. Peace. 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 Peace.